In part A, we are asked to calculate the negative acceleration that this man experienced as his rocket-propelled sled moved down a track from an initial speed of 632 miles per hour to a final speed of zero miles per hour. Notice we know the final speed is zero because this rocket-propelled sled is brought to rest. So in this picture, we can actually mark that the final velocity was zero miles per hour and that the initial velocity was 632 miles per hour. And we know that this took place in a time interval of 1.4 seconds. So we can list that as a known quantity. And then we are, again, asked to find the acceleration. So from the list of three kinematics equations here, we would want to pick the one that involves those four parameters. Notice that we do not yet concern ourselves with the displacement. So any equation that has delta x in it, we would neglect for the time being. So let's take out that equation as well as that equation. That would leave us with this equation that we can use to find the acceleration. So let's write that down. And then what we'll do is we'll rearrange the equation so that we can isolate the acceleration. So to do that, we will subtract the initial velocity from both sides of the equation. This gives us v minus v naught is equal to at. And then, of course, to find the acceleration, we would divide both sides by the time interval. So now we have a nice equation we can use to find this negative acceleration. The only thing we need to be a little bit careful about in this question is that it requires us to find the answer in SI units, standard units. So standard units for acceleration would be in meters per second squared. And the problem is our velocity, or at least the initial velocity, is given in miles per hour. So we're going to actually want to just start or resume by taking that 632 miles per hour and converting it into meters per second. Maybe we'll come over here and do that. So we'll list it one more time, 632 miles per hour. And then we've listed some convenient conversions over here. We can see that one mile per hour is equivalent to 0.44 meters per second. This was taken right out of the textbook. So what we'll do is we'll multiply by a conversion factor here. We'll say one mile per hour in the denominator is equivalent to 0.447 meters per second in the numerator. Notice the way in which we've set that up, the miles per hour here and here will cancel out. So effectively what you're going to do is take that 632 and multiply it by the 0.447. And when you do that, you will find that the initial velocity is 282.5 meters per second approximately. So back to our acceleration calculation, the final velocity was zero meters per second minus the initial velocity, which we've just converted, and then divided by the time interval, which I believe was 1.4 seconds. Yes, it was. So we'll put that in as well. And then we'll enter this into our calculator. This zero here doesn't matter. So the numerator is just the negative 282.5. You'll divide that by 1.4, and you'll end up with negative 202, approximately. And this will come out in meters per second squared. So that would be the negative acceleration that we needed for part A of the question. Let's go back up and take a look at part B, which wants the distance traveled. Now he's moving in a straight line, so distance traveled would be equivalent to the displacement in this case. So really we're looking for the displacement. If we look back at our equations, we could use either the second or the third one. It's perhaps easiest to use the second equation to solve for displacement because it's already isolated for delta x. So we'll come down here, we'll rewrite that equation as delta x equals initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half acceleration times time squared. And then we just plug in the known values. Again, that initial velocity, once we converted it, was 282.5 meters per second. We'll multiply that by the time interval of 1.4 seconds plus one half times the acceleration that we just determined in part a multiplied by the time value squared. Don't forget to square that time value. So when you punch these numbers into your calculator, you will get approximately 198. And this will come out in meters. So this would be the correct answer to part B of the question.